came off the lake behind me and I have to run a 400 meter portage to the next lake. Portage, what does that mean? It simply means that I gotta carry everything I have with me across land, including the boat. Now that weight, that weight can add up. Everything you carry on a canoe trip has to be carried with you across these portages. If you camp on one single lake, that's cool. That's all right, you come off the access point, you set up your camp, you're good to go. You don't have to carry anything. I mean, you just load it in the boat, you're back to the landing, no problem. But if you're gonna jump in, if you're gonna make jumps, I call them jumps, and you're gonna jump in several, several uh, lakes, you're gonna have to carry everything. So pack light, okay? Try to keep the bulk down. Another thing I'd highly recommend is that you practice carrying your canoe on your shoulders, okay? I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Practice carrying the canoe. Get used to its weight on your shoulders. Walking around in your backyard with it doesn't do it. You should take it to a park. I know you're gonna feel stupid, but take it to a park or something and walk around the park. Get used to the, to the bounce of it on your shoulders. Get used to the way it plays on your, on your neck. First and foremost, know your distances, okay? Use your map. Pre-plan your trip. Always pre-plan your trip. Always. Okay? You might look at a map and think that this is, for example, Radiant Lake up in Algonquin. I don't know if you can, you can see the map. But, um, so Radiant Lake up in Algonquin here. It might look short. That looks, oh, I can do that no problem. Yeah, and generally you can. But the point is, is the portage is in between Radiant and let's say you're heading down the, uh, down into um, Francis Lake. You better know your distances and you better know how far you can paddle in a day. My average speed on a lake, depending on wind and depending on the uh, other conditions, I can normally do about five kilometers per hour, roughly. So factor that kind of stuff in. Regardless, the point is how to, how to carry your boat. Okay, I just checked the, where I came off the lake, I just checked the site the uh, landing area where I came off the lake because I, I don't want to leave anything behind. Once you get down this portage trail and you get onto the next lake and you keep moving, you're not coming back. Whatever you left behind is going to stay behind. That's just how it works. Um, I found lots of other people's gear that way and I've left my own gear behind by mistake. It happens. It just, it's just one of those things that happen. The bugs are wicked. It's about, uh, it's the first week of June and the bugs are wicked out here. So. When you get to the portage area, spray yourself up with bug juice, all right? And uh, if you've got a collared shirt, which I always wear, put your collar up and uh, spray behind the collar with the bug juice because you're going to be bothered all the way along the, along the trail. It's just a given. There's nothing you can do about it. So in order to lift your boat, the boat is a, um, depending on the type of boat that you're lifting, all canoes are the same. They all have a center thwart. Helps hold the sides together and it's called a, a yoke. So the, the yoke is what goes on your neck. The entire weight of the boat sits on your neck. That one behind me, again, is 60 pounds. So it's all bearing down on my neck. So the, uh, the faster I can get the portage done, the better. Um, how to lift it? How do you lift the boat? So a lot of people, I see a lot of people um, people who are beginning at this, I see a lot of people struggling with the whole weight thing and how to balance the boat. Believe it or not, the boats are very well balanced. Every, every canoe I've lifted, um, I shouldn't say every canoe, okay? There's some canoes you can't lift. They're like, they weigh a thousand pounds and you're not lifting them. They're, they're, they're gonna kill you. Don't, don't try to lift the heavy canoes. The fiberglass, the fiberglass canoes, they will kill you out in the bush. They will just take you down, right? Uh, wood canvas canoes, they're heavy too, but they're beautiful to paddle. So I love my wood can canvas canoe. That this one here made by Swift, it goes about 60 pounds. They make much lighter canoes now. Uh, somewhere around the range of the same, this 15 footer. So they can make the same boat about 32 pounds. Get the 32 pound boat, incredible. Now, how to lift the boat, let's get on it. So here's what happens. What you wanna do, I'll spin the boat like this so you can see what I'm up to, okay? What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna sit the boat on its edge like this, right? You'll notice my paddle is already secured underneath the thwart and the, and the uh, stern seat. Um, I should say the bow seat, pardon me. So it's under the bow seat. When you're portaging, 
you're always facing, you're always going to be facing the bow. It's the way the canoe's built. Rest the canoe on your knees. So rest it on your, on your knees right here, okay? Rest it on your knees. Swing her up on your knees like this. Get your strong arm ready. If you're right-hander, you're going to be opposite to what I'm doing right now, right? Get your strong arm ready. Swing it up and grab the, grab the yoke. So you'll see my hands on the yoke. Grab the, this is my stronger arm. So grab the yoke with your strong arm, just like that, right? I'm going to disappear for a minute, sorry. Take your, your other hand, put it on the gunnel. Now you'll see that my, my strong arm is free, all right? It's all resting on my knees and my hands holding it, right? Put your, 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 your stronger hand underneath the boat. You'll see it there. Lift it and swing it. And you are good to go. You'll notice with, with this particular, uh, what I always do is I always put ropes from my bow seat, so from my bow seat to my, to my center thwart. I always put ropes. Why? The reason I do it is so that I can take a breather. In other words, when your hands are up like this, oh my God, the blood rushes out of your hands, it's, and your shoulders get all messed up. I just found for me that by putting ropes here, I can just drape my hand through the ropes. Pretty easy breezy, it's easy to go, right? I can rest my hand down, I can hold the boat up with one arm. One arm. The, that arm gets tired, I rest it up here like this. Now, again, you can tie your, you can put your life jackets onto the seats. I just need you to remember something though. When you are carrying the boat, the entire weight of the boat is on your shoulders. So whatever you add to the boat, be it life jackets, whatever, that adds to the weight on your shoulders. Do whatever makes you comfortable, that's it. Now with your, with your yoke, you can buy pads for the yoke. I don't particularly like them because I like the way the yoke sits in my shoulder, on my shoulder blades, but um, some people love them. I would experiment with them, okay? Um, once you're under the canoe, mosquitoes are coming for you. So you're gonna want one free hand so you can swat the little devils, get them off you, right? Uh, black flies generally won't bite you when you're under these things, but uh, they still can, um, depending on how you have the bow. Believe it or not, if I have the bow up like this, black flies are going to bite me. I pull the bow down like this, and I'm inside the boat. The black flies aren't biting my face. So, having said that, again, to take the boat off, you just do the exact same thing, just in reverse. Strong hand on the side of the boat, right? Lift and tilt. Rest it on your knees, and down you go. Okay, next is your. Let's get moving. Get out, let's get moving. Get out of these bugs. So, you want to put your pack on next, okay? Get your pack ready again. I've already checked the landing. Put your pack on your shoulders. Lean forward. Do up your straps. Tighten your straps down, right? Next thing is your uh, belly belt or your hip belt, right? Tighten it up as tight as you can tighten it. So it's resting on your hips. You need this to rest on your hips. Let the bag sag down. There shouldn't be much weight on your shoulders, okay? So tighten it up as tight as you can go, and there shouldn't be much weight here. Again, readjust. Do up your chest strap. A lot of people skip this because for whatever reason, don't. Do up your chest strap. You don't want to be part way down that trail. You know, you might be 200, 300 meters in and all of a sudden your pack starts coming off your shoulders. Then you got to put everything down and swing it back up. It's all about energy conservation, right? Once you swing the boat back up onto your shoulders, these pads, believe it or not, will help protect my shoulders somewhat from the burden of that yoke. Um, and if you do rent a canoe, by the way, if you do rent a canoe, most canoes now come with a pretty nice yoke, all right? They're, they're all cut to fit your shoulder blades. So let's get moving. Portaging is never a, I wouldn't exactly say it's enjoyable. It's 
it's one of those it's one of those necessary evils of canoeing you can't get around it um, well you can I mean if you park your if you park your butt on one lake and the landings like right there you're good awesome but if you want to get into the backwoods like here and you want to jump from lake to lake yeah you're gonna to have to portage it's not fun but you can make it you can make it fun ah well sorry not really make it fun but you can make it enjoyable how's that because what you can do is you can start reading tracks seeing what's been through here like I'm following a deer trail right now there's a portage trail it's not very well used you can start to read the forest through which you're walking and uh, it gets your mind off the the pain your body's in <laughs> yeah you're gonna sweat you're gonna get bit but it's freaking fantastic I love it I'm doing what's known as a a single carry that means I'm carrying everything I own well for this trip on me for longer portages it's longer than 400 meters I'm gonna I'm gonna do what's known as a a double carry in fact I'll call it a half double carry I know that sounds stupid but a half double carry is when you carry everything you got as far as you can drop half of it and do a uh, yeah carry carry one item to the end of the portage and then go back for the other item or two items whatever it might be at any rate be careful when you're be very cognizant when you're crossing streams and mud and things a slip a slip can cause you a lot of pain all right and um, but get out there and do it.